I'm Robin Clevett. Welcome to my channel. I'm out on site and I'm doing some cladding. So I'm doing a whole building here and we're going around it with a beautiful bit of cladding. And I'd like to show you a few tips and tricks. First of all, thanks to all my new subscribers recently and viewers and all the comments. Thanks for everyone joining me over on Instagram too. That's where I post a few pictures now and then of stuff that I don't get to put on the channel. Um, and anyway, let's get on with it. I've got a couple of things I'd like to go through with you. I'm using a tantalized board and it's a really nice cladding board. I've let it all stack here and dry right out before I use it. I don't like it when it's too wet because you get a bit more shrinkage and that can sometimes result in a shake or a split somewhere. So I like to avoid that. So I've had it under cover. It's in good order. The moisture content is just about perfect. So let's get on with it. So we've got our building, it's a timber frame structure. We've got an OSB sheathing behind this Protec membrane. And then we've got a counter baton, which is 25 millimeter and it's um, treated timber obviously. And this goes all the way around to create a void for ventilation. We've got a ventilation strip, which serves a couple of purposes here. It ventilates our floor continually all the way around. And it also lets air into the cladding space. The cladding I'm using is a feather edge cladding. It's 175. We have around about a 40 millimeter cover, which I'll show you. And we're gonna be going top to bottom with it. And we're gonna be using a solid corner. So that's the first job I'm gonna be doing is going around putting my corners up. The reason I haven't got corner battens on is because I attach them to the corner post and put it all up as one and fix it. So I've got hidden fixings and it keeps everything nice and straight and true. So let's get on and do that first. Here's one of my corner posts I'm doing now. I'm getting them all prepared and fixed before I start measuring my cladding in. And this is the vent. This is the typical vent that goes around the bottom and excuse the tractor as it goes past. You might hear that in the background there. We're out in the sticks here. So at the bottom of the post, I've cut out some relief there and what that effectively does is that clears our vent strip, which is effectively on like this. And that is also the support for the bottom piece of cladding as well, which gives us the correct tilt as we go around. So you'll see that when it goes up. So I'm gonna fix my battens on here, and then I'm gonna fix the whole thing up there. Now, I use a particular screw for battening. It's a batten screw, it's by Spax, it's Wirox, so it's really good. It's not gonna corrode strong, and also, excuse me, it will take, the batten will take a fixing close to the end. So if I just screw this in here, it's got a really nice head on it, which is dead flat. So instead of like a normal countersink, it will just keep pushing the timber apart. What this is gonna do, it just holds it. There's no splitting. There's no piloting needed. They're designed not to have to have a pilot in, but they're superb. And they're easy to remember because they're 87 mil long. So when you search for them in one of the big, okay, tool station or screw fix, you can actually find them. Just put in 87 mil spack screws and you'll find them as well. So let's whack this one on to give you an example of how it all works. So what I'm doing here is by fixing this to the post i'm going to get a secret fixing there's no straight fixing and also the post corner meets the corner of the building so it's particularly difficult to fix in normal circumstances let's get the other button on the back side here here he is i'm gonna put that one on here Let's put it around this way. Here we go. Let's get this one fixed on here. I would say they are superb, these screws. I'd like to show a little bit of the corner.
that's it. Now we can put a few screws in. So when I go and hold it up, they're already there. I'll just put one here and there. That'll just make it easier for me. And it's all about making your life easy out there, guys. Life's hard enough without, without it being any diff more difficult. And they're not cheap, these screws. 26 pound or something a box, but there's nothing like them. Good. Let's go and whack that up and see how it looks. And that's what we're looking at. Voila. We just slot that there like that. That's it. Give me a little bit of membrane. And it holds itself, which is lovely. And then we just got to pop a screw in. I'll start in the middle. Come around this side. And that's it. That's my first little tip for you. That's how I fix my corners. And it's a lovely solid job. It gives you a really nice solid feel too. So I have all my corners in now. So the first thing to do now is clad this end and I'm going to clad the back as well. So I've got a load of cladding here and they're all the lengths that the supplier sent me. I didn't get much choice in that. They're 4.8 meters long, which means that in the case of the gables here, I've got full lengths if I want them. However, if I cut those full lengths out, if the offcuts aren't usable anywhere else, I may run out of material. So in fact, what I may need to do is cut the first one, use the offcut, cut another one, use the offcut, and then I'll get a staggering join running up the gable. But before I do that, I'm gonna set a rod out for the height, work out how many courses I need. So if we take the front, for example, between the bottom of the post is where my cladding is, that's where it's gonna start and it's going to travel up to my soffit here. Now, there's a sort of minimum lap that you want. There's no maximum lap, but obviously you'll use more material. I like to use, um, so I've got a 175 mil board here. I'll just show you the board. This is the one, this is 175, this board, and I'm going to have a lap of around about 40 millimeters, okay? So I'll just show you what that means. I'll use a marker so you can see it. I'd use a pencil normally. So that is what I will cover, and that is what I will show. I've got about 135. So what I'm going to do now is measure my overall run, divide it by 135 in the first instance, and see how many full boards I've got. And then I'll make an adjustment so I can end up with exactly the same rip at the top. So we have got, between the soffit and the bottom, we've got 2.4 metres. So I'll rough that in first. 2.4, divide that by 135, which is gonna be tricky because I'm filming this with my phone and that's what I'd normally use as my calculator. So um, let's just times it by 10. 1350 would be 10 boards, 20 boards would be 2700. So if I take off um, 135 will be 2565. If I take off another 135, it's gonna be 24. 3 so I know that if I go up at that gauge, I'm going to have a weird rip at the top. So I'm going to divide it exactly by the number it's, which I've, I've worked out, which is eight, 18 boards. So I'm going to divide 2.4 by 18, and that will give me the exact cover. So that's that thing. Next thing I'll do is I'll mark a rod up, and I'll go through and I'll mark all the courses on here, and I'll keep that rod to transfer around the building. So where I'm going to be cutting between my corner posts, which are super solid, and the other side, I'll make, I'll measure through. That's 3704. 
I'll check that at the top, the middle and the bottom. And ideally what I want that is, is to be the same length. Three, seven, oh, four. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'll just check it a little bit higher up. Because what I want to be doing is making them all as close to the same as possible. Yeah, so 3704 is good. Now, I'll just cut one piece at 3704. Now this material, they take it each one out of a pair. So I've got one which is the reverse of this. Now as they cut it, you have a 90 degree end here and I like that to be the back, okay? I don't want it the other way around so it's slanting upwards. So I'm gonna cut this one first. I've got my chop saw here, a long edge to support everything nice and flat. I'll run that on there. I'm gonna just take the end square first. The boards aren't often square, so we'll square that up first. And then what we're gonna do is measure 3704. I'm gonna mark this with a pen so you can see it. That's not very good. Too fat. I shall get my pencil. I've got so many pockets with these trousers, which are great, but, um, and strange things happen when I get home because the washing machine collects all of my bits and pieces out of my pockets. It's magic, actually. I'll never, there we go, look. Carpenter's pencil, got to have one of them. So 3704, okay, I'm just going to flop that round the other way to cut the first one just to cut the first one. I'll whack that in there like so. Now, I'm not gonna cut all the way through, I'm gonna start it off. That's my good end. I'm gonna put a mark here. Yes, you know what's coming. I'm gonna attach a block just like so. Whack a couple of, oh, this tape measures are jumping out of my pockets. Whack a couple of screws in there. Let me see. Well, we got some over here. Actually, I've got just a thing in my pouch. Here we go. New radio mic. And this is why the sound is a lot better now. Thanks to all the people who said, God, I hate the sound. I can't watch your stuff. It's a load of rubbish because of the sound. So um, I worked it out and it was pretty easy. So, right, that's the first thing. Where's the, where's the hammer? Everything's everywhere today. Just gonna tack this stop in the end here. And that's it, so I've got repeat cuts now. I'm just gonna complete that cut, give it a go. So I've got an off cut. It's pretty useless to me, apart from across one set of battens. It would have been nicer if it was a little bit longer, but I can use it in a few places. But as I say, I'm gonna set this out now, mark my rod properly, work out how many courses I've got all the way around the building, how many pieces I've got and see how many full lengths I can run without a series of joints. Let's get on with it. So let's take this one in there, just try it between the posts and if it works well, we'll get on and make them all up. That's absolutely mint. That's perfect. Cladding this gable end up now. I've got my rod here. All I've got here is a level reference point, which is what my rod butts against. And the rod represents the boards. You might want to have a quick closer up look at that. So the rod represents each course. So all I have to do when I'm setting out my cladding is butt this against here. whack my nails in and that keeps it really nice straight and true so that's the only bit i wanted to level up there this gives me all my equal courses i use this on every side on the back on the side on the front 
and the top of this rod represents the soffit. It gives me a full course and a cover fillet where I need it on the soffit. So what I'm doing is I've got all of my cladding behind me here. First thing I do is I leave them in the pairs as they were cut and I clean the end up. I'll put a square end on there. I'll show you what we do there. So it's just a matter of not marking anything. And we just literally run the circular saw through past the square. Clean them up. And then from there, we take them over to our table here. We've got a stop on here. That's been put on, which is the length of the cladding. Whack this off. And then I can take it and pop it in situ. So what we want is a nice fit. We don't want a really tight pinch fit to push the posts out, even though they're super solid. So the idea is this one will go in where it needs to be here. I get my rod up against there, pull that up onto the line, spike it, I'll hand spike this one just because it's easy. Now, when you're fixing cladding, you don't want to be going into the top of the board underneath. The top of my board underneath is there. So I want to get above that. So here's the section through. I've just put these here to give you an example. There's the cover there. That allows for shrinkage. There's the nail there, and it comes in just above the top of the other board, all right? So that's the correct way of fixing it. The other way in tradition as well is if you were hand nailing this, you aim the nail back there. When this board shrinks that way, which they do, because the nail is aimed that way, it pulls itself tight to the one underneath, okay? So that's another, that's a traditional technique. That's the way we were taught years ago. So, when you're fixing a feather edge cladding, this is an existing bit of feather edge cladding I've got here on this site. And um, I've noticed that, that it's been fixed with more of a second fixed brad. And they've also fixed it, if you look at this brad, they've also fixed it with one which isn't that suitable for outdoors. If you're going to do this, you really want a stainless steel one because even the galvanized ones that you find, it only says suitable for indoor use. And the problem with using a brad is you can clearly see it here, it's just pulled away. It's just not got enough strength. And the other pr problem is, as the boards get the sunshine on and this side dries out, it's like a bimetallic strip and it wants to curve out. So all the moisture comes out of this side and it curves out, it, get, it shrinks. And then that's what gives you this gap here. If you watch me, I can tap it back. There. And that's not really good for insects and all the rest of it. You really don't want that. So, if you're gonna fix this cladding, you really wanna use a nail with a head. You either wanna use, if it's oak, you've gotta use a stainless steel nail. You can get them for your nail guns. If it's a traditional treated softwood like this, a galvanized nail or a galvanized plus nail is absolutely fine. Um, and as I've said before, you really don't wanna catch the board underneath. So in this instance, you can see they've actually caught the board underneath. They've got three fixings there. So instead of three fixings, you just need one decent fixing, a nail with a head. And the other beautiful thing about that is in the future, if you just get a bit of movement, you can just tap them back. Whereas these, no matter what you do, it's gonna always pull away because there is no head. It's just a very, very small, in this case, rusty pin. So I'll let that be a bit of a um, sort of warning to you if you are thinking of using a brad or a pin. Back to the ends with my rod. Bring that down to where I want it to be. And now. Same the other end.
and then we can fix it all up. And that's it. We've just got to keep repeating that now really nice and quick until we get to the top.